we are focusing on the Lordship of Jesus in our lives. What does it mean when Jesus is Lord, Lord of my life? What we discovered is that Jesus is the Lord of all. Philippians 2 says the following, Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him a name above all other names, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus says over all things, it is mine. It may sound daunting. It might even sound like someone has la like having control over my life and that I run the risk of losing my freedom. But what we discovered is that being under the Lordship of Jesus is actually the only way to be free. My freedom on my own terms is actually very dangerous. Our freedom lies in a person, namely Jesus. It is only in Him that I can have real relationship with God the Father, that I can have God quality life. He loves me enough so that I can give him authority over my life and that he will give me true life and true freedom. It is his love that makes him the best option for my life. Romans 10 verse 9 summarizes this. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with a heart resulting in righteousness and one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. That is why the word surrender is so important. The gospel makes it clear. If I need salvation, I put my faith in Jesus, in what he did for me on the cross. And then he does it within me. The work of the cross becomes God's work in me. He makes me new. Lordship basically means that I am under new management. I keep putting my faith in Jesus to make all the newness a reality in my daily living. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That means that I now believe in him in all aspects of life. I am who he says I am. That is my new identity. I live as he says is best. I align my life with this lifestyle that is driven by his word and the guidance of his spirit. I do as he says. I live a life of simple obedience to him. That is the essence of surrender. And he empowers me by his Holy Spirit to live this new life that he has given me. Water baptism is an integral part of following Jesus. In the Bible, we see the example of people when accepting Christ in faith and experiencing the newness of life being baptized. That was the norm. In Acts, in the sermon of Peter, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This was the norm. Baptism was a command from Jesus in Matthew 28. Verse 19, Jesus says, not just to those disciples, but to all disciples, go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
The word baptism here comes from the Greek word baptizo. It literally means to dip, to immerse. This is exactly what happens when I take my coffee and a rusk or a cookie and I dip it in the coffee. The rusk is covered by the coffee. So when we talk about baptism, that is what we believe. We believe in the baptism of believers. A life surrendered to Jesus in faith is the only qualification needed to be baptized. Baptism is done by submersion underwater. This is an important association with the death and the resurrection of Jesus. There's an important symbolism in this moment. It is a step of obedience to the commandment of the Lord Jesus. Baptism also follows as a first step for people who have come to faith in Christ Jesus. It is not a prerequisite for eternal life because nobody is saved by their own works, only by their faith in Jesus. It is in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, that we read, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. It's very important to understand that baptism is not something someone else can do for me or on my behalf. Rather, it is me who makes the decision, even in the best of their intentions. If my parents baptized me as a baby, I have not yet been baptized as a believer. There are so many beautiful examples in Scripture where baptism is the next step after coming to faith in Jesus. In Acts 2 verse 30, 41, we read about 3,000 believers that believed the message and they were baptized. In Acts 8 verse 35 to verse 37, an official is baptized after Philip explains the scripture to him. In Acts 8 verse 13, even Simon the sorcerer believed and was baptized. In Acts 9, verse 1 to 20, it is Saul of Tarsus. He got saved and was baptized. In Acts 10, it is Cornelius being baptized. And in Acts 16, it is Lydia. In Acts 16, the second half, it is the prison God that's being baptized. And this is just to mention a few. You see, baptism is a public declaration of an inner reality. I first put my faith in Jesus. That is the inner reality. And then I get baptized as a public declaration. I don't have to wait to grow or to be perfect before I get baptized. Baptism is not a, de a destination. It's rather a trigger, a starting point in my journey with God and a first step in my following of Jesus. In Romans 6, verse 3 to 5, Paul describes the beauty of this moment of baptism. As he says, Do, Are you unaware of the fact that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For we have been united with him in the likeness of his death. We will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. You see, in baptism, we publicly identify with Jesus. His death is the death of my old self. His resurrection is the resurrection of my new life. Colossians 2 verse 12 conf confirms this. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you are raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. But baptism is such an awesome celebration of what God did in us when we got saved. It is not to be missed 
or unnecessarily postponed by any believer. I trust that you will have a productive discussion in your group. And remember, group discussion notes are available.